Are you poor? Well, if you're poor, that's a mindset. If you have no money, you're broke. So in Queens, New York, somebody decided to squat in a $2 million house and they can't get him out. In the New York Post here, I'm gonna show you what this house looks like. <laughs> this is a $2 million house in New York. Also, you would think the New York Post would upload things with a higher resolution, but they don't. This is a $2 million house a squatter is currently living in. Amazing, right? $2 million will get you a mansion in other states. So, a squatter who is now taking advantage of a couple's $2 million dream home where they've hoped to reside with their disabled son is living the luxury life and has turned it into his personal haven. The Post has learned Susanna and Joseph Londa, both 68, envisioned a tranquil retirement in this recently acquired three-bedroom sanctuary in Queens, New York, that they purchased for $2 million. Little did they know, their Shore Road property would become a battleground against squatter Brett Flores, leaving the legal owners in agony. This is a very weirdly shaped $2 million house. So you enter here, and then you go to the garage, and then the house. I mean, it's kind of cool, actually. Or you enter over here. 3,100 square feet. This is what the inside looks like. It looks like a very old-timey house. Very cozy. Images obtained by the Post unveil the home's interior showcasing charming bay windows, hardwood floors, skylights, vaulted ceilings, and a waterfront view spanning 3,100 square feet. For its part, the primary suite features a bathroom, a soaking tub, rain shower, outside amenities, patio, roof deck, all that good stuff you'd expect in a $2 million home. There seems to be lots to look forward to, but the family's jubilation spiraled into despair as Flores usurped their home and appears to be living it up on the ground. A handful of months after signing the deed for the residence, the Londas remain locked out. That's the kitchen, that's the bedroom, which looks really nice. For the Landis, the home wasn't a sanctuary, it was a necessity. Who has Down syndrome and needs special care? The home's proximity to relatives ensured peace of mind, not to mention in a future in which Alex would be safe near family. I just want to know I could die tomorrow and he's next to his brother. It has become a nightmare, a total nightmare. This is the couple with the son who has Down syndrome. That's the grandmother of the mother. Uh, that's the husband. Court documents show that Flores, 32, once served as a caretaker for the former homeowner, owning a tidy $3,000 per week until he died. Now Flores says he possesses a license from the previous owner. We couldn't believe it, Susanna said. Despite lacking any formal lease agreement or rental agreement, Flores has entrenched himself in the property, exploiting New York squatters' rights law which protects occupants who have lawfully resided in dwelling for 30 consecutive days or longer. So in New York, there's something called squatter's law, where pretty much you can sit in a property, whether you're you're renting or you're doing what this guy does and just sneaking, living in houses, I guess. And if you're there for longer than 30 days, when they try to kick you out, you have what's called squatter's rights. So you can stay there for an extended period of time. And it takes a court order for you to get kicked out, which is ridiculous. It's good for people struggling with finances and all that. It's shitty for landlords across the board, but landlords get enough money, in my opinion. But it's still fucking obnoxious that this is a law. This is the porch. This is Brett Flores, who actually, he doesn't seem broke or poor. He's living pretty good. He got a COVID mask. The COVID's kind of over, but I guess when you live in a house like this, you don't want to get sick. The homeowners gave Flores a 10-day notice to leave and then tried to enter the property alongside an insurance inspector. Uh, if you have no lease and you're not paying rent, what is your right? Said Joseph, the husband. Flores has also advertised rooms for rent within the property. <laughs> so not only does he live there, he's trying to rent out space. Which, they can't kick him out, they can't enter. I don't know how he's going to make a proper lease for this. That's probably where he'll get in trouble. Under the moniker of the Prince Room, Flores peddles accommodations for $50 a night, compounding the couple's financial woes as they foot the bill for utilities and upkeep. Oh, wow. So they're still paying the bills. They should stop paying the bills. Susanna detailed Flores' disregard for their property from leaving windows open around the clock, incurring exuberant heating bills. Yeah, he's probably doing that now to be petty. It's I get the hustle, right? Where... You want to live in this beautiful home for free, and you're going to take advantage of the law because the law is there for a reason. But I mean, it's a couple with a kid with Down syndrome. Like, have a little bit of respect. You're freeloading at this point. And that poor kid, like, they did it for that poor kid. You know, if he has a phone, he read this article already. So, windows are left open. There's paint smeared. Uh, there's some damage on the front door. Doorbell was ripped off, and a ring doorbell was replaced. He probably put that in there. Very crazy. Our system is broken. Susanna said, I would never have imagined we have no rights. No rights at all. 
Most recently, Flores filed for bankruptcy, allowed, which allowed him to stay in the home. That's another thing, too. If you file bankruptcy, you get to stay there even longer after the court case, which is obnoxious. When a residential tenant files a bankruptcy petition, an automatic stay prevents the landlord from bringing or continuing a case to obtain possession and enforcing a judgment obtained before the commencement of the bankruptcy case. It makes me feel completely forgotten in this legal system, unfair and not able to do anything. Yeah, I mean, to, to be able to live in someone's house for, and who knows, so said this has been going on for, they've been trying to buy this house for a couple of years, so you have to assume this guy's been here for a couple of years. I mean, real piece of shit, it seems like there's another article on this. A woman claiming to be close to the queen spotter has refused to leave a couple's $2 million dream mansion they purchased to live in with their disabled son, insists that Deadbeat is actually a wonderful man who is caring for his own ailing child. Wait, <laughs> the lore goes deeper. Maybe they could split the house since they both have kids they're taking care of. The woman who said she's very close to the squatter, Brett Flores, explained that the hanger-on is caring for his sickly infant in the lux luxury Douglaston mansion, from which he refused to leave. The lungs did not inflate at birth. He's on the ventilator. The woman who declined to confirm whether she was with the squatter's relative or friends of the child's mother is married to Florence, and they are living together, but refused to clarify whether the couple were slumming it as a family in the shore of Red Haven. I couldn't tell you where they're living. So for all you know, they're in there. And nobody can tell because Brett keeps answering the goddamn door. <laughs> Other neighbors who spoke to the post said they haven't seen a baby or a woman in the house and that Flores hasn't been around much since the prior owner died. Flores 32 has repeatedly claimed he had an agreement, Bernie Fernandez, who died in 2023, to continue living in the residence. So he's been here for a year and nobody realized. Flores worked as a 24-hour live and caretaker. According to O'Sullivan, he was paid 3000 a week, which we heard about already. Flores' associates said she couldn't recall him mentioning any agreement but described the community backlash surrounding his rent for your occupancy as just horrible. Neighbors have been outraged by the couple's struggle to move out into their own home, pounding on the door and shouting, get the squatters out. The couple who have not entered the house have hired a celebrity security guard to monitor their home. Amid the ongoing battle to evict their property squatter, the landers have been coughing up cash for the bills, utilities, and listing rooms for rents. The couple have struggled to evict him because he recently declared bankruptcy and had five civil court hearings that's just insane like now you feel bad for both of them but one of them like what if this guy really did say listen you can live here when i die but who sold the house would be the question i have who sold this house it's it's a shitty situation for everybody around but if this guy doesn't have a house deed then it's not his house so i'd be willing to believe he's lying but yeah this is some bullshit going on and New York Queens, but um, yeah, let me know what you guys think. See ya.